So you can see, it runs pretty well. All right, this is Christian Toth, I'm with Coach Set Motorworks, and thank you for checking in. Um, so I usually have my Mustang project and the Range Rover and my other Land Rover projects, but uh, with all the driving I'm doing with work right now, I figured I need a commuter car. So uh, I gave myself a small budget of like $1,000 to get a car, and I uh, wanted to get something that had some kind of character to it. So I picked a W126 Mercedes uh, 300 SB, it's a 1985. And uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's old. Um, so it, uh, as my wife says, looks like I bought it off a nursing home. So we've just nicknamed it uh, ARP for AARP. Um, as you can see, uh, this is probably the cheapest diesel Mercedes that they have uh, in my area, I guess. So I, I know a little bit about these diesel, en diesel engines. Um, they uh, were nicknamed the Million Mile Engine because they just last forever. Usually the cars would rust out before the engines would. So my idea was to get a diesel Mercedes. Now in my area, you're either looking at ones that are not really running or ones that are like three or four grand out of my price range. So I found one that was listed for uh, 700 bucks and I went to check it out. It was actually uh, just outside of Baltimore where I live and I checked it out. It, Apparently the guy was owned by his father, had it for 30 years, serviced at the local independent Mercedes shop, and so the, rec the service record was there, it just has been sitting for about two years. So uh, there was a couple things wrong with it, and it had been sitting, but it was the cheapest Mercedes, diesel Mercedes that I could find. So let's do a quick look around and see what we have here. All right, so as you can see, it definitely looks a lot better on camera than it does in person. Um, but you have some paint peeling on the roof, on the hood there. Uh, and despite my best efforts, cleaning up the wheels has been pretty tough. I have all my brake dust caked on those wheels. Um, if you look, there is some rust spots. It's not free by any means. I mean, for the price, I can't really argue, but that one looks a little bit better. Uh, a bunch of scratches, some paint, uh, clear coat peeling here, and same with the rear. But um, overall, it's been pretty good. I've been picking away at some things here. So here's the trunk. It's nice. It's pretty big. Obviously, with any old car, it's going to have a lot of extra parts in the trunk. So this is for my sunroof. Um, this is a secondary seat bottom I could use. And obviously, you got to have extra fluids. So this was owned by a guy that was in a wheelchair so he had a little wheelchair um, lift on the back here which is also why the rear end sags so far down um, some other things i've been doing uh so that just trying to waterproof it has been my biggest task so i just put a bunch of caulk around here so the water doesn't travel inside there this is delaminating but the defroster still works which is good and there's no leakage leaking there so let's take a look at the inside um, it's dirty uh, so it was pretty wet in here and I uh, I'll show you where the water was actually leaking from it is traveling from underneath the carpets into the back but as you can see it's not the greatest but it'll work um, I'm gonna do a whole deep cleaning video of this especially on the roof you can see there's a bunch of mold probably from the moisture and it uh, from what I've been told uh, vinegar or ammonia really helps to break that down. So the seats are in pretty good condition. Uh, there's no rips or tears. Um, but just to show you, so it has 240,000 miles on it, well more than that because the gear for the speedometer doesn't work. But some of the things I've been picking away at here, so, um, so I've been hitting the junkyard and I got a new, a new to me, um, ashtray along mainly because I, I needed to be able to plug my phone in and stuff on my trips. Um, but at the junkyard, I also got uh, another temperature screen here. So it says 63 degrees, which is pretty cool. But just to show you, so it starts up really well. Um, I did have to replace the glow plugs, but let's check out under the hood 
All right, so uh, this is what under my hood looks like. So the first, one of the first things you should do if you're buying one of these old Mercedes is you see all your fuses are right here. Now these are the old style, like there's an old one that's brass. Um, that's a copper one. And you can see most of these have all, are all aluminum or some kind of aluminum alloy. Before you try to diagnose any issues, my recommendation is you replace all of the fuses. They might look good, they're not broken, but the, uh, but the uh, con, <laughs> what's that word? Um, whatever, electricity doesn't work, go through them very well, and you can get a bad connection. So I recommend doing that first. Uh, I replaced my fuel filter, and a lot of times, your hoses that go into the fuel injection pump, as well as the hose that goes to your gas tank, are gonna probably be corroded. Um, as well as the, as well as here the uh, injection pump. I replaced that, it's a Bosch unit, um, very easy to look up. And I was having trouble starting it when it was getting cold, so I replaced one, two, three, four, five uh, of the glow plugs. And now it starts, I mean it was probably 25 degrees or 30 degrees one morning and started right up. Um, so with the older cars, all the rubber is probably going to be bad. So there's some rubber grommets inside your uh, oil canister there that I've replaced. Uh, there's some that I still need to replace for my fuel filter here. Um, uh, new belts, which I've done for the power steering pump. And there's two for the alternator. Um, first, I kind of forgot about that and <laughs> lost power steering one day. Uh, I could still drive it, but you know, um, that's why it, uh, that's why I lost it. So, um, another thing I've had to do is replace my, uh, expansion, my reservoir expansion tank here, my coolant expansion tank, and I put new fluid in it, but as, as you can see, it's very dirty, so one of my next things I need to do is flush the coolant in here. Um, obviously with any old Mercedes, any diesel, uh, you're going to need a nice, good, big battery, and the one I had in there was probably about that big so uh, that wasn't really cranking it over very well um, so like I mentioned uh, I was getting water in the inside and where it comes from is back here underneath this and then the same on the other side so I took this off and I just actually followed a pretty good YouTube video on a pretty good affordable fix uh, where he uses um, some uh, flashing and glue and, like an epoxy and flex seal and just tapes right over it it's really hard to weld it's not a very expensive car and it's not worth doing the welding in my opinion so uh, that was a great fix for me and it's worked out well and the other thing there's usually a rubber seal that goes along all the way here mine was just petrified and deteriorated so I just use Blackhawk um, again keeping in line with this affordable build that was the best thing for my uh, situation. So let's go ahead and start it up and see. Uh, so you can see, it runs pretty well. So it ticks, um, like any old Mercedes. And um, right, so you can see it, it runs and starts fine. It drives fine. Something else I probably will take care of is this gasket that goes along my um, valve cover here. But you know, just straight, a good oil change and just freshening everything up. New filters really did a wonder on this. So let's do a little uh, keep walking around. This is what my uh, commuter car here is. What coach that motor works. And as you can see. Need to do some deep cleaning here. I have taken out the rear seat because it was uh, pretty trashed. And so if you see what this seat butt looks like down here, that's pretty much what this entire inside looked like. So I've already done a first pass. I need to do it again, um, you know, with some uh, better, better scrubbing materials like uh, vinegar or ammonia on that ceiling. But it's getting there. Pretty excited about it. Um, but if you guys enjoyed this video, I'm going to try to keep doing more on my W126 85 uh, Mercedes 300 SD. So let me know below if you have any suggestions for cleaning my headliner or 
if you uh, you know want to see more videos, I got to do the rear suspension because it sags pretty bad, um, and some other odds and ends here and there. But drop a comment down below if you enjoyed my video. Uh, hit the like button or subscribe so you can see more and see the progress of my ARP car. Talk to you later. And this is Christian Toth with Coach Stop Motorworks. Bye.